to even hold some of these viewpoints. So the government doesn't really need to censor them. They don't need to be so authoritarian, although there are some examples which we will go on to. But they don't need to be you know, so crushing in their totalitarianism in terms of censoring these viewpoints because the sheep will police the other sheep. So if you're around a group of young people who are, you know, Western Europeans, they will mm. generally hold to the beliefs that they were indoctrinated to believe, and they, they won't dare venture into any of the taboos, which, of course, is mass immigration in terms of Sweden, has not been generally successful in practical terms and in social terms. Talk about the housing shortage that is currently taking place in Sweden and how that conflicts with this mass immigration policy. Right. Well, you know, it's funny because a lot of people say I'm, uh, I'm a hypocrite because I came here as a refugee, so how can, I, how can I deny others the chance? There's a huge difference between the situation today and the situation in the 90s. Um, in the 90s, we actually had room for people. Like, there were apart apartments standing around empty all over Sweden. Now we have a housing shortage so bad. People who graduated can't move out of their parents' house because there aren't enough apartments. According to the Department of Housing, we need to build 600,000 apartments within the next 11 years to accommodate everyone in need. So basically, we need to build a new Stockholm. We need to build a new capital city, the size of that, in order to accommodate everyone. And it, it's ridiculous because now we have a uh, 1,000 refugees a day coming to Sweden, and they're looking to set up a refugee camp outside of Kristianstad, which is a... Um, it's, it's close to Malmö. It's, it's down in the south. Uh, basically, there's this massive field, this massive green field that's normally used for things like international scout meetings or um, military shit. And they're planning on turning that into a refugee camp somehow. They said that it can house up to 40,000 people. So, I mean, that, that's just insane to me. That, that's... That's crazy. So, so the, the guy who is supporting this initiative compared it to a refugee camp in northern Iraq. And he and I'm like, that's not a good thing. Like, that doesn't sound like a good thing. <laughs> it's crazy. And another story again. So basically, you've got no room for immigrants again in Germany, Belgium and other countries. We've seen stories about the poor, the would-be homeless, being kicked out of their homes to house these, this new influx of migrants that is coming in over the past few months. Basically, you've got housing shortage in Sweden. It's, it's impractical that you could house these people. But we've also got this public shaming angle, which I want to touch on again. We carried an article on Infowars about a year ago now, which was called Sweden Immigration Critics Get Home Visits from Thought Police. One of Sweden's biggest newspapers, Expressen, used criminal hackers to break into Discus, which, if you don't know what that is, it's basically a, a comment system for news articles. We use it on Infowars.com. So they used this, this hacking group to break into Discus and get the email addresses and identities of commenters online and to reveal the persons behind the nicknames or anonymous user IDs. So then this newspaper actually sent a reporter and a cameraman to these people's homes, these people who had merely criticized mass immigration in Sweden on, you know, internet news articles and basically publicly shamed them and then put their images, put their video on the newspaper website, you know, on YouTube. So you've got thought police actually going out and physically harassing people in Sweden simply for criticizing mass immigration. Now, I know you, that you use the, the, you know, the moniker, the angry foreigner on your YouTube channel. Is that because the situation in Sweden is so intense? It's so oppressive that critics of mass immigration could be targeted simply for banal online comments, which aren't racist, which aren't xenophobic, merely drawing attention to the economic and the social impacts of mass immigration. Is that a concern? for people in Sweden right now. 
Well, yeah, I mean, there's there's a there's a need for the anonymity, I could say. Um, me personally, I just don't feel like having my window smashed or having <laughs> shit sent to my mailbox or, you know, eggs. So I just want to be comfortable. And I'm not really interested in people knocking on my door, whether it's fans wanting autographs or annoying critics. You know, I just want, don't want to meet people. When it comes to Expressen, though, you're, you're right. They did. And actually, I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but... This hacker group they, that they worked together with are militant left wingers. They are um, Antifa. Are you familiar with the organization Antifa? Yeah, I've heard of it. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, it's Antifa evolved into, you know, they were they used to be uh, Antifa hackers before. So that's their background, and it's insane that nobody is, you know. Th- the only ones criticizing the fact that our mass media is cooperating with left-wing extremists is the alternative media. They're the only ones who did like this huge audit of who these people are. And it's partly, you know, I partly have to defend it because not all of some of those people were politicians and it wasn't it was blatantly racist things. It wasn't just sensible criticism. So I can sort of understand wanting to um, audit politicians and people who are in power. However, they also named and shamed people who aren't politicians, people who simply, you know, uh, someone who owns a company, for example, workers. Another uh, newspaper, Aftonbladet, which is uh, the second or, well, Expressen and Aftonbladet are the two biggest newspapers in Sweden. They did the same thing, and it, it wasn't even with politicians. They took this guy who wrote like this, um, it was sort of a funny post. I mean, he basically wrote out a fantasy about how he wanted to murder this fat, annoying, radical feminist who was on Swedish radio. And you could tell that the guy was joking. I mean, he basically laid out this video game scenario. Which, where you know, he, feminists threaten to kill all men constantly yeah. they can get away with it that's fine yeah exactly because this feminist said some horrible shit right but you know she's a part of the mass media she's a part of the establishment nobody criticizes her but yeah he basically wrote a post about how he wanted to you know go to the tv station and kill everyone and they visited him in his home and tried to make him feel ashamed of having these thoughts funny thing about that was that he had no shame he was just like well you know, I'm 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 gonna stand by what I said. It was a joke. You're taking it seriously. You're a fool. That's it. Like, so it it didn't really work because that guy had guts. But that's the type of stuff our mass media is doing. And recently, actually, they decided to publicly name a shame a seventy year seventy year old woman with a heart condition because she was writing uh, racist things online. And that's just amazing to me because there is no need for this. Like they were using the reasoning that uh, democracy feels better this way. If everyone stands for what they say, we're going to have a healthier opinion and debate climate. And I'm like, you wrote an article about her without even addressing a single counter argument to anything she has said. You were literally just trying to scare her into silence and thus scare everyone else into silence. They're trying to use like this iron grip on the population to keep them from expressing themselves. And it's, it's truly, I mean, it's some dictatorship bullshit. We're back on the Alex Jones Show. We're talking to the angry foreigner. And if you haven't seen his videos, Definitely go to YouTube and check them out. Just search for The Angry Foreigner. Welcome to Sweden is his most popular, as far as I've seen. It's got over 670,000 views. It went viral a few months ago, and he's made several English language videos since. We're going to take your calls for The Angry Foreigner at 800-259-9231. That's 800-259-9231. We're talking about Sweden which again is the ultimate example of rampant liberalism gone mad. They've got a mass open border policy. We're going to talk about the impacts of that. But the angry foreigner, as far as I understand, the official in charge of your anti-extremism policy or your anti-Islamophobia policy there in Sweden, this was a a top-ranking official. He was so liberal. (laughs) He was so trendy that he actually went on to join 
ISIS. Is that correct? Um, we had uh, what? What was his title? Did you say? I. He was the head of the anti-Islamophobia body. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sweden. He was. Uh, he was. Uh, we have a public service debate show called SVT Debat. And they hired this guy as some kind of expert on Islamophobia. And it's so fr it's freaking hilarious. This guy was on TV saying that, you know, you shouldn't be prejudiced towards Islam. You think that these guys just have like beards and AK-47s. And a couple of years later, he's posing with an AK-47 telling people to join the Islamic State. That's wow. You can't make that stuff up. And his name, his name was Michael Nikolai Scramo. But then he had another yeah. individual who was basically, he was, he was an, an expert. This was in your video, Welcome to Sweden. He was some kind of expert on Islamic extremism. And he was talking about the, um, the radicals traveling from Sweden to Syria to fight for ISIS. And he said that we can't condemn ISIS. He refused to condemn ISIS even as they were beheading, you know, countless people in the Middle East, correct? Mm hmm Yeah, that was in my um, uh, migrant crisis video, actually. And yeah, it, it was completely insane. You know, Gothenburg alone has produced more jihadists than all of America. Sweden is leading in Scandinavia in uh, ISIS warrior export per capita, so to speak. And yet we have the least uh, legal, like, we have the least legislations against terrorism. It's not illegal to join ISIS here in Sweden. It's not illegal to recruit for ISIS. If the National Security Police suspect that you're going to travel to Syria to join ISIS, all they can do is give you a phone call that you don't even have to, like, pick up and answer. So it wasn't until April... Yeah, the spring this year that Gothenburg assigned someone to you know, firmly and uh, concretely deal with this issue, because this has been going on for like two years at that point. <coughs> and when they interviewed him, as you say, he refused to renounce the Islamic State. He was of the opinion that, oh, it's unnecessary to talk about jihad because, you know, people are traveling for different reasons. Uh, some people traveled to Bosnia in the 90s, and some people traveled to the Finnish war, the Finnish winter war, which was um, around uh, the time of the Second World, <coughs> World War. Excuse me. We're going to get and into that after the break. We're going to break now. We're talking to the angry foreigner. We're going to talk about why... You know, the backlash to this is rising, but still it seems to be uh, oppressed by the media, by society. We're going to talk to the angry foreigner. We're going to take your calls after the break. This is The Alex Jones Show Live, Infowars.com. Stay tuned. This is The Alex Jones Show Live. I'm your host, Paul Joseph Watson. We're talking to the angry foreigner. That's where he goes by on YouTube, and you can check out his videos, which have been a viral success. We're talking about Sweden, which is a, a prime case, or some would say a basket case, for what happens when liberalism runs rampant. We were talking about how people within Sweden are critic not only criticized, but actually hounded by the media, by peer pressure, simply for talking out, simply for speaking out against mass immigration. And I wanted to ask you before we go to calls here, we had the IKEA incident um, a couple of months ago now, there was some debate about whether that was a, a beheading or a, you know, a, somebody slitting somebody's throat. It was definitely a terror attack by Islamists targeting Swedes in an IKEA store. We've had stabbings. We've had grenade attacks. How bad has it got? I mean, we hear these stories about, you know, these Muslim ghettos where ambulance men, police, firemen go there to basically just do their job. They're attacked with stones. They're attacked with weapons. How bad have these Muslim ghettos got? How bad has this tension got? Do you see there being riots in, as, the, as there was in Paris a few years ago, arising out of these Muslim ghettos in Sweden? How high has the tension become to the point where there could be some kind of riot or uprising? Well, I feel I should, I should point out that 
Uh, it is true that we have no go zones. I think I think we have 55 no go zones. And the police chief said, just as he said, that there are certain areas where if if the police are following a vehicle and that vehicle travels 